Well, the Bolt Graphics situation just keeps getting more interesting. I'm Darren Wesh, founder and CEO of Bolt Graphics. Today, I'm announcing Zeus, a completely new GPU design that will revolutionize the way we work, create, and play. I've previously made two other videos on these guys. If you're interested in watching those, I'll link them down below. They appeared at GDC 2025. Well, they weren't exactly at GDC 2025. They were at the Fairmont Hotel in San Francisco, a few blocks away. So let's take a look at this live demo. Holy shit, there's an actual computer over there. I guess I'll eat my words this time. Oh, okay. They don't have the actual GPU there. They're using an FPGA instead. An FPGA is a field programmable gate array. Think of it as a reprogrammable piece of hardware where you can validate the design before you commit to manufacturing an ASIC. ASIC standing for Application Specific Integrated Circuit. You don't exactly want to remake your chip every single time there's a bug or fault so you use an FPGA. This is a path tracing demo. Dawesh claims that their GPU would complete this 0.2 seconds faster than an RTX 4090. GeForce 4090. Um, on this NVIDIA GPU, this, this uh, render takes 0.51 seconds. And we're projecting that on a single Zeus chiplet, uh, that the same render will take uh, 0.3 seconds. And across four chiplets, it's going to be four times faster than that, than that as well. But let's try and work out the math for this. He said 0.3 seconds for one chiplet. So across four chiplets, that would be 0.075 seconds. And each chiplet has 64 engines running at 1.2 gigahertz. The FPGA running at 100 megahertz took 106 minutes to complete the task. Let's start by converting that 106 minutes to seconds. That gives us 6,360 seconds. If we assume completely linear performance going up from 0.1 GHz to 1.2 GHz, that gives us 530 seconds. But there are 64 engines across 4 triplets. So if we divide that up, we end up with a final time of 2.07 seconds. Now remember this is calculated from an FPGA's performance, which has additional routing and configurable logic overhead compared to an ASIC. So you could definitely assume that the ASIC application of this would be a whole lot faster than 2.07 seconds. It could be three or even four times faster, making the final time 0.5 seconds. That number sounds familiar. Um, on this NVIDIA GPU, this, this uh, render takes 0.51 seconds. Not quite the 0.075 seconds that Dawesh implied. Give me a Nobel Prize in mathematics for my astute divisional skills. Isaac Newton wish he could do this. Another thing there to mention is that the proposed node process for the Zeus GPU is 5 nanometers. 5 nanometers is above average guys, huge even. At least it has a great personality. Only TSMC and Samsung are producing 5 nanometer or below as far as I'm aware. The hard part about chips is not designing them, even though that part is incredibly difficult. It's actually mass manufacturing them for the consumer. That's the most difficult part. From what I could gather about TSMC, if you tried to order chips from them, you would have to order them in what is known as a lot. A lot consists of 25 wafers, which means ordering a lot would cost you just under half a million dollars, or I'll put the exact price next to my head. That could get you at least a one bedroom tent in Canada. <laughs> now I don't know what the exact die size for the Zeus GPU is, but if it were hypothetically 400 millimeters squared, it would make it slightly larger than an RTX 5080. That seems reasonable to me since the RTX 5090's die is 750 millimeters squared. At 400 millimeters squared, you could get approximately 148 dies from a 300 millimeter diameter wafer which puts the cost of each die at about 126 dollars per die but the cost to bolt graphics would obviously go up because tsmc doesn't have 100 percent yield it'll work out closer to 300 dollars per chip after bolt graphics buys them from tsmc so from all that you can assume the cost to consumer for a bolt graphics gpu will would be around 1400 dollars based on nvidia's markups these estimates are on the low end by the way since TSMC have raised their prices this year. However, it could be cheaper if they decrease the size of the die which would increase the number of dies per wafer, which could possibly push the price closer to maybe $1000, maybe even under that. 
In the second video, they showcased their electromagnetic wave simulation performance. Hey guys, this is Arlesh. I'm here with Cole. Cole's our director of R&D, and he's been working on a very special project. We're going to show a quick demo of this very special project, which is electromagnetic wave simulation. Also, after we had some success with the uh, um, hardware accelerator lightning for ray tracing, we decided to look at other areas where this could also be beneficial, um, and we landed on looking into different physics use cases. And since light is on the electromagnetic spectrum, it felt natural to look into EM more. Yeah, that's the one with the crazy 300x performance jump over an NVIDIA B200. The B200 costs from between $30,000 and $40,000 and has eight Blackwell GPUs in them just for reference. I don't even know what to say about this since the exact performance details aren't shown for the B200. It's just a graph with a multiplier. 11 minutes and 1 second for this sim on the slow FPGA. Again, if we do the same math as before, 11 minutes and 1 second is 661 seconds. Assuming a linear performance gain up to 1.2 GHz, that would put the time at 55 seconds. With 64 engines and 4 triplets, that would bring the time to do this sim down to 0.2 seconds. With an ASIC, we can assume that this time would be cut to about 0.05 to 0.1 seconds which implies that the NVIDIA B200 would take from between 15 to 30 seconds to do the same thing. I'm making a lot of assumptions here. Don't trust my math. Anyway, all this leaves me even more skeptical even though I really want more competition in the GPU space. The problem is that none of what they were showing was on their own GPU but was on an FPGA instead. So the most significant thing about their GPU, the expandable VRAM, simply couldn't be shown. I don't think I've ever seen a company release an announce video like Bald Graphics did. No hardware, simulated benchmarks, and it just works. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.